What's going on guys? So as you guys see behind me, I have my uncle's most badass H1 I have ever seen in the state of Maryland. And this thing is a complete freaking unit. So we're gonna go on a POV drive today. I'm gonna take you on a full walk out of this truck because not many of you guys probably see these. Um, I don't know how many people are actually watch these things on YouTube. Uh, when we were younger, we used to take this thing off-roading a lot and it got absolutely beat to hell. Um, but it's got really, like it's got fully redone. The interior, exterior, wheels, tires, the full nine, this truck's been touched. And uh, it's a freaking unit. Like, I don't know what other way to put this. Like, this is a military truck, solid, solid steel. Solid, solid. Oh, the back bumpers, freaking rock solid, dude. Like, I don't, I'm like, there's no other way to put this. Like, if this hit my truck, um, oh yeah, and by the way, my Raptor is being built on July 4th, so stay tuned for that. We are going to take the H1, probably on a little off-road trip to Roush Creek, something small, nothing crazy, H1, 35 package uh, Gen 3 Raptor, and 37 package Gen 3 Raptor, so that's going to be sick. Stay tuned for that. I can show you guys the sheer mass of this truck. So I'm about six feet tall, and I would say this truck is sitting at a solid six six seven six eight maybe even right at seven feet freaking tall and got a little muddy you know something slight check out this bar on the front though absolutely solid steel it's got a little bit of use right there you know so my uncle john you guys know him he has that white lowered um crew cab f-150 that's got the whipple on it and this is also his truck this is like his weekend you know a little cruiser something fun off-roading uh but check out how we did the inside that thing is super sick suede white stitching and also got the Corbo seats to match the front and back. Corbo all at the top. They did this thing super nice up on the inside and there's little seats back there. So this isn't like your normal military H1. This one was fully done up. Um, I don't remember how it looked really when he got it. I believe it was like a silver and then he went with the matte, but it actually came out freaking flawless. There's some things that are meant to be driven fast and this is not one of them. I can tell you one thing, this truck is probably 10,000 plus pounds and the way it comes to a stop and way it accelerates I know it's like it's not built for speed uh, But it's just crazy how like the military uses these I feel like the Raptor would be more suitable um, Just because it's fast it's nimble it can carry weight and can get out of a tight situation if you need to But I feel like this also on the big end Nothing's gonna stop you like I can probably no joke ram through all these cars in the parking lot and I highly doubt anything will stop it it's got a Duramax diesel engine. I don't know the exact specs on it, but I know it's got the diesel. Just to give you guys a good old walk around. This thing's a freaking unit, dude. I need one of these in my life. Like, but I don't want this one. I don't want one this nice. I want to get like the straight actual mil military off-roading one, two-door, maybe even the one with the little bed, fat ass snorkel just like this one. This snorkel goes high. So like when I mentioned earlier, I don't know if I I could have swore I said it, but I don't know. So the one time we did go off-roading, um, the water was up to like right here and it was like up here on this windshield and i remember i was sitting right here in the back and the water was no joke guys right up here and we were literally went in the middle of it stopped went all the way out and then backed all the way up because all these jeep guys were like oh that hummer ain't gonna make it ain't gonna make it they were like just like talking shit jawing at each other a little back and forth and i was like damn i gotta put some respect on the hummer's name because this thing is a freaking tank the way it went through it um obviously it wasn't on these wheels and tires these are a little nice it got a little got a little taste of the bougie lifestyle um after getting beat all those years okay i'm gonna have to climb under here and you guys can check out the sheer thickness of this lower control arm Look at this compared to my fist, dog. Like, what? How was that even a thing? The spring, stupid thick. Like, I can imagine someone's finger getting caught in there. Upper control arm, the ball joint, the axle, like, everything. Like, this is the thickest front end I've ever seen on a vehicle in my life. Like, look at that. God damn. And so, yeah, the brakes feel a little weird. So, my uncle was telling me, like, be careful with the brakes um, because it, it's not like a true normal vehicle. I believe that is the rotor right up in there, if you guys can see that. So, it has, like, brakes, he said, that are directly in the middle. I guess it's more designed for off-roading and nothing could happen or brake lines can't get torn off on the sides if you're going through, like, deep debris or stuff like that. If you're climbing over a vehicle in freaking whatever country and just, like, any, you don't know. You don't want nothing, no brake lines, something like that to get in the way because if you lose your brake, are absolutely screwed and John you were not lying the amount of looks that this thing gets and you know for not being something fast usually I always think you need like a fast vehicle to make me smile but this on the other hand well first it's a goddamn mission let me put my camera down it is a mission to climb up in this thing and I am freaking agile but uh, 
So the amount of people that look, smile, like point and give this truck thumbs up is absolutely insane. Um, I'm gonna take it around the block, show you guys. I didn't film much on the way driving. I had to get a good feel for it. And let the glow plugs go away. I remember my old diesel with that little squiggly light thing. But check out this interior, guys. This thing is so freaking pimp. Got it all the way up on the roof. You guys let it walk around a bit idling. Good old Duramax diesel. Roll coal, baby. I mean, it's something like this you don't see every day, and it's kind of cool that I my one of it's like it's one of the trucks in the family. And you know, he always thought about getting rid of it, but it's like one of those things like once you get rid of it, there's no getting another one. Like you already went down this road once, there's no sense of going down it twice. So I honestly think he should keep this truck for a very long time. You know, I told him before, I was like, yeah sell it you never know you can make stupid good money on it he bought it years ago and i know these trucks go for well over six figures now this is pretty much like the price of a hurricane i've seen him go for like 150 160 i've seen even some in the 200s that are strictly done by alpha that have like the full alpha package alpha interior alpha wheels like they have the full nine on them and i've seen them go for a stupid pretty a stupid amount of money all right so let's jump in the truck and actually check this shirt out shout out street speed come and take it ar not a better shirt for this truck, honestly. Jamming out some Morgan Wallen, you know? Gotta be like that. So I am going to film the best I humanly possibly can in this behemoth of a freaking truck, guys. Um, we're gonna take it around the block. We are gonna go get some people's reactions. I wish I had someone with me to film. Freaking seatbelt. Oh my God, I hate when this happens. Dude, this is why I don't wear a seatbelt sometimes. Every <laughs> Why? Oh my, all right. All right, I got the seatbelt to work finally. Just need to buckle it now. All right, it's buckled, thank God. So let's go around the block. I mean, this is like, I don't even know how to explain this. Like I'm trying to give you guys like my point of view and let me put you at eye level. So this is the inside of an H1. This is the view. There's my tiny mirror over there, and I almost sideswiped a baby Subaru Outback when I was leaving. Absolutely almost crushed it, but you know, I didn't see it, so it doesn't count. I love this thing. It just like, every time I get into a vehicle that's like unique and it's different, I just want it. I really want it, but I want one that I can like somewhat destroy. Like, I just want to, like, freaking clip that minivan right there. Just knock the whole ass end of it out. Dude, there's nothing. I could probably drive straight through those freaking coals if I wanted to. There's just no nothing stopping this. Absolutely nothing. Like, it's got to be something stupid to stop this thing. I know some of these come with the gas engine, and I'm sure they're weak as hell. But this one having the Duramax, and I'm sure the torque is probably at least, like, eight or 900. Because it is an older Duramax. So I know this thing's probably got some power to it. But, God, a little Momo racing steering wheel. Hey, look at that. Italy. One thing right off the bat is I can tell y'all this. It is not a normal vehicle. You have to stop from very, very far away. Like, you got to be looking a mile up the road to see what's coming. Because if you don't have fun stopping this big behemoth, it does not want to stop very well at all. It is just a freaking tank in, like... The girth on this thing like we are taking up the whole road bro i don't even know how this thing's road legal but i love it i love every bit of it so a little update took my seatbelt off the thing locked up again started choking me in the neck but you know this this is the truck you never need to wear a seatbelt um it is just so solid i don't i think if a semi hit me i might like get a little bruised up hit my head or bounce my lip off the stand well nothing i haven't taken already to the mouth like a solid rock but, uh, you know, I, I feel perfectly safe in here. Um, I just want to go off-roading. The amount of looks and thumbs up that this thing, that guy was just giving me, he was filming too. Oh, God, this thing is awesome. I love this thing. This thing is actually, like, you know, you don't, you're just cruising in it. And the looks and thumbs up, like, just makes me laugh. Because people are, like, getting enjoyment and, like, excitement out of seeing this big-ass truck drive around. And 
I'm like, I'm going like 40 miles an hour. Everyone's going around me. Like I'm going slow as shit, but it's just so funny. God, I love this thing. I need a Hummer now. So to be real, I didn't think the truck was going to be this like drivable. I was thinking that the Hummer was going to be a lot more sloppy. Like you can see, it's got a little bit of play, but I can feel the truck moving. You guys probably won't see it as much. Um, it's just like, it, it is pretty responsive. I would just say the biggest downfall about this truck is the brakes. If they came up with a better braking system. Oh shoot, there's 12 up here, boys. They out today, it is beautiful out. We gotta switch lanes. What's up, brother? Be safe out there, dude. So yeah, we're going to Wawa. We need ourselves an energy drink, I ain't gonna lie. Your boy is a little beat. But you know, this actually is a lot better than I expected. You just, the only thing is, like I said, you just gotta learn to brake from super far away. Granted, I'm used to driving sports cars all the time and stuff that's a little more sporty, more nimble. And then going to jump in something like this, yes, it is a very, very massive like adjustment when it comes to driving something like this. But you know, take your time with some stuff like this and just feel it out and it's perfect. I mean, if you're in the market for an H1, I say do it. Um, I can tell you one thing, I've driven Jeeps, and I would take this over a Jeep every single day. Granted, it is a different caliber of a vehicle. I don't really think there is much you can compare this to. Maybe like a Mercedes 6x6, but other than that, I really don't even think you can compare that because I, they're like so much difference in price, and this, I mean, they're both used for their war and shit, but like, I don't know. This thing is just a freaking unit, dog. Let me whip this sucker in there. I'll park this thing up front, too. I don't even care. Watch this. Be going straight to Wawa. What's up, brother? Thank you. I'm going to park it like I'm cute right up front at Wawa. <laughs> I'm going to park it right next to this little Hyundai watch. <laughs> I'll be that guy. Yep, we're pulling in here. Yep. Just, you know, normal day. Hummer. Coming to get the milk. Good Lord. And check out the shifter. So it has obviously park, reverse, neutral, drive, but it has D circle, which my uncle said just leave it in that one. And it has regular D, two, and one. So yeah, that is pretty badass. Check out a lot of these old gauges. Got even a tire pressure gauge down there, coolant, fuel, boost gauge. It even has an auxiliary fuel switch you guys see right down there, which is pretty sick. It's got a lot of old style retro gauges, but I feel like this stuff just won't die because it's like, it's not nothing digital. It's straight up like OG style, nor the check engine light. That's just a, that's just a light. Don't mean nothing. I also love how everything is like spread out in this truck and it's got a, like the old style gauges. You can see lights, high beams, low beams, cargo lights. Old style gauges goes to 100 miles an hour. I would not do that. That'd be super sketchy. RPM gauges only goes to 3,500 RPMs, which is like red line, which is pretty cool. And you can see it's got all the auxiliary for um, air conditioning, stuff like that. Got extra cup holders, and these are the window switches. So it is kind of like a Jeep also, where they're off to the side, which is pretty cool. But the driver's side is still on this side, which is also pretty cool. Something that also is pretty cool. I don't know. I find everything interesting in like different vehicles I drive, but how like square when this window is, I know it's for like adding like when they do the bulletproof glass and shit, uh, like when these trucks run Iraq, which is a um, little scary, but it's actually pretty badass how they're designed. Hey, 5.0, saw dude. But yeah, this is pretty cool. They're all square style windows, so I'm sure it's easy to like pop that like massive plexiglass, whatever they use. It's not plexi, it's like, I don't know what the name of the bulletproof glass is. Like, drop a comment, let me know what that is. But you all know what I'm saying. It's pretty cool how it goes right here. Something also that is pretty cool. So I guess it's like, this is for the level and balance of the truck all the way around. Um, and we're not on elevation, so it's pretty much at dead zero. If anything, it's leaning a little bit to the left, which is like spot on. It's a little that way, if you all can see that. But that's pretty cool. Something a little different right there. And also how like the windows split. Right there, it's got a little cool stuff like you normally don't see in a regular vehicle. Because this is far from regular. So we just had to throw a little bit of gas in the Hummer because John let us do this video on it. Threw about 50 bucks in it, eight and a half gallons, not bad. It's a little splash on the old H1's tongue, but you know, that's brandy what about what we drove it. About 10 miles to the gallon, about 
five and a half gallons, whatever it was. So about 50 miles of driving. God, look at this freaking Corbo. You know, I'm, I'm gonna have to give it to Corbo. These Corbo seats are super comfortable. Just like the Fox body, like same kind of style pattern. And they hold you extremely well. It's not like too much in this truck. It's literally perfect. I, I thought it was gonna be like super tight and like kind of awkward sitting, but nah, it's, it holds you perfect driving this. I just love experiencing different type of vehicles, especially something like this, because it's not every day um, you get to drive an H1 or you know people with an H1. Freaking purrs like a kin, boys. Purrs. I'm actually surprised with this Duramax, the Chevrolet Duramax that this thing has. It, it, it decently gets up and goes. And look at that. Roll down that window. And then these control the back. And I don't know, maybe this might be a heater for the windshield. That's what I think it is, like a defrost. A lot of everything's like manual, just like one button for everything. I don't know what that is. Like I was saying before, there's an auxiliary fuel switch. So I, I remember seeing when the Alpha trucks, they have like an air compressor. And what I mean by like an air compressor, so it's like if we're pulling up to the beach or whatever, I can air the truck down without getting out of the truck and then I could pump the tires up as like, say we're driving off the beach and the tires are maybe at like 20 PSI. I could pump them back up to 40 as I'm stopped and it'll just fill right up and keep on going, which is pretty cool. I know the Mercedes uh, AMG 6x6 has that and uh, I obviously, I don't know if this specific truck does, but it has the switches for it, so it might, I gotta ask my Uncle John, but I want a Hummer now. I don't know why I went and drove this, because now I freaking want it. That's my problem. I really have a problem with vehicles, and I'm willing to admit it. Um, I need to be signed up for like AA, AAA, whatever the freak it's called, where they put you in like a facility and they kind of talk you out of things, or, or like an AA meeting, I need that, but for vehicles, because all I wanna do I love vehicles. That's the only thing I honestly truly love to do and actually enjoy. So like me, I'm like, I don't even care. My van's got freaking holes in them. And I'm like, yep, I'm gonna, my Raptor's coming in two weeks, but no, I do not need a pair of shoes. Do not, they're perfectly fine. I don't know, I'm just that type of person. Let me know if you guys are like that also because I have a lot of friends that are like that. And just like that, we're back at the house. We got Apollo here and Ricky. I had a couple things to mention. So we have both Raptors actually coming in very soon. My father's Raptor should be here next week. His is a 35 package. Mine is actually getting built on the 4th of July. It said it's gonna be built on the 4th, in between the 4th and the 6th. So fingers crossed it gets built on the 4th. That's literally as American as it gets right there. So I, I'm super stoked to get that. Once we get the trucks, we're gonna do some off-roading, um, Bud's Creek, a bunch of other places we're gonna hit. So that's gonna be a great time with the Raptors. Can't wait for them to get here. And thank you guys for watching today's video. Make sure you guys go subscribe. We're road to 100K, about to hit 20K. It's only up from here. Thank you guys again for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed every little thing we did and I showed you all with the H1. Until next video, I will catch y'all in the next one. Peace.